Rubizi, instead of him going for a pinch right here, that is usually like a predictable uh, predictable play that the enemy team probably thought he was going to do. So what Abizi did instead is, hey, with 30 seconds left, I'm going to go ahead and sit on time to give my teammates support. And if we do end up getting flanked and I don't win the gunfight, that's okay because now you're going to be at 20 seconds left. All the enemies are going to start spawning here and we're going to spawn out with 20 seconds left and we get to rotate to new all the way over at P3. And um, the way that would all work down is basically we would be fully rotated for P3. It would then be a tied game. And based off of P3, that's sometimes a money hill where you can get a full 60. And then just like that, the scored limit can change 100 to 40. And... I'm not saying that's what Abizi thought about all in this one instant, but this is ideally what you're looking for in VOD review. Uh, and it's just trying to influence the map, you know, two to three steps ahead, being two to three steps ahead of your opponent. All right, everyone, welcome to Pro Player Breakdown. Today, we're going over Abizi's gameplay. He played Breenberg Hotel Hardpoint during the Warzone versus CDL Pros tournament. And then in this gameplay, we're going to go ahead and watch it from his personal point of view so we can go over the tips and tricks that he's doing as a main sub player that will help you guys in your solo ranked play matches. If you'd like to follow Abizi anywhere on his social media, you can follow him at Abizi. And it's just trying to influence the map, you know, two to three steps ahead, being two to three steps ahead of your opponent. So right here, again, these guys are just flooding through. We unfortunately lose the gunfights. And just like that, 20 seconds left, we're spawning out. We're now rotating for P3. And because we win this full rotation like this, Abizi is now holding the entire right lane. We have a player in time. We have a player holding left lane. We have a player holding middle. And uh, Abizi is just over here being uh, a nuisance, ideally. So right here, uh, we didn't see anyone push the right lane. We didn't see anyone push the left, uh, the middle lane. So obviously these enemies are pushing left and that's where Abizi rotated to help his teammates in time. Big kill, big two piece, oh my gosh. And just like that, I wanna point out, by the way, they guaranteed 40 seconds off of that very first play. And just because we won these last few gunfights, now we guarantee a full 50 seconds on that last hill. Just playing it perfectly, right? And that's what I was talking about, going for that two to three steps ahead, where if a BZ flanked spa right there, his team might still be spawning spa and they don't get an opportunity to rotate for P3. So great play by Ibizi, pushing out towards the hard point, forcing a gunfight so he dies, then he can spawn at new. All right, three dead. Last guy time, we're just going to flag, play for the trade, four dead. And then this is a very controversial thing. What sides do we want to control on P4? This is controversial in ranked play. Let me get that clear. Controversial in ranked play because I have people saying, block spa spawns, let's hold spa, let's get spa spawns. And then I hear other people say, no, let's get bed spawns, let's get bed. Me personally, for P4, I always prefer spawning at bed and then you get a beautiful fatal funnel on these enemies spawning at spa, right? So again, let's just quickly go over this setup right now. Let's say all the enemies are spawning back spa. Right now, they aren't. Let's make that clear, they aren't. But let's say that they were spawning back spa. We would have a player holding back door like that. We would have this player holding back door. We would have this player holding the cross. And then this player as well can uh, ideally just, you know, hold the pinch or something like that, right? Um, and that is a beautiful setup for P4 where you're just spawn trapping these enemies and there's nothing they can do. There's nowhere they can go unless they take a crazy long route all the way over here, which if you're doing that, you might as well just rotate at that point, right? Um, so... It's good to see that these guys decided, no, let's get bedroom spawns. And um, this sets them up again for a beautiful rotation where all these enemies are spawning back spa. And uh, based on the kill feed, it looks like we may be missing one player. And no, no, I don't think we're missing a player. Yeah, okay, good. All right, cool. So we weren't missing a player right there. Again, we win the rotation and this is where we're just controlling the pacing. We're always winning these rotations. Um, we get three dead right there, big four piece um, based on the team. Whenever I say four piece, three piece, usually I'm just talking about, hey, we got that team wipe. We got uh, three dead. Uh, look at that beautiful line. I just want to point out real quick. We got a player middle, uh, hard blocking, making sure we have spawns for P6. He's holding all of middle. This player is holding all of that. And then this player is holding this. And then Abizi is here just to help whoever needs help, right? Um, so if you ever find yourself in a situation like this on ranked play, the whole point of you being in this scenario is help whoever needs help. 
and just get ready to trade, right? So the player dies, um, his teammate dies left lane in flowers, and Abizi pushes it, gets those trades. And at this point, I think this is where Abizi goes for a crazy flank through that I really love. Yes, yes. Okay, so right here, what Abizi did is he sat in a corner at restaurant with about 15 seconds left, and he was sound, uh, sound using sound EQ to see if any enemies were pushing up middle or if any enemies were going to be, you know, pushing through old. Now, guess what? Abizi didn't hear any enemies at all pushing through, so that means there's only one place these enemies could be pushing, and that's over here in the right lane bedroom. So this is going to allow Abizi's team to be prepared for these gunfights. They're going to know exactly where to look. And then, of course, Abizi now has a flank as well to just cause a collapse and ideally soak up the time for next. Beautiful gunfight win. And right here, because Abizi wins that gunfight, right now Tommy's going to be calling out, uh, Abizi's going to be on the pinch. Unless um, Tommy saw Abizi cross couches, then he wouldn't call that. Uh, but right here, this is just a fast play by Abizi, where the second he wins that gunfight, he immediately gets to his teammates because he knows that the enemies are going to think that he's flanking. Um, and now we're in a beautiful spot where I'm not sure who picked up middle, but whoever did that, Holy crap, what a heads up play uh, because we basically got all four dead um, and this player spawned up and said, all right, cool, let me get to middle and just cut off all the players spawning at spawn. So whoever's middle right now is slaying out all the players at spawn. Beautiful play, good for him. I think that was scumming. Yeah, that was scumming, going for that play. That was a great play. Loved watching that. All right, and uh, this is where now um, Abizi is just holding up this left lane, making sure we can soak up the rest of time. But this is now where we go three dead, almost four dead. And this is where the tide of the game is starting to shift a little bit. Um, and we're going to see how for this next P1, our job is to focus mostly on spawns, right? So Abizi's flying out, looking for a kill in the uh, uh, right lane at spawn. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what an insane two-piece. Three dead. And again, is still just trying to push out this left side, hold down uh, this entire spa side. We actually had a very nice line right there. I don't know what happened with those spawns, by the way, so that's a little weird part. So we have a player uh, basically holding the back. We have a player holding middle, soaking up time. We have a player um, looking like he's holding over here and here to help Abizi. And then Abizi's holding this right lane. Um... Essentially, what was happening is these enemies kept like spawning over here and kept like hitting routes like this. Um, but out of nowhere, once we get four dead, that actually doesn't happen anymore. And what happens is these enemies like kind of hit a route over here. And that's ultimately what gets us uh, broken. But I'm not sure what really caused the enemies to spawn over there. And that's where we just got awkward timings. Yeah. So most of those guys right there were probably thinking the enemies were spawning spa. And then we got caught off guard by dying from uh, Kitchen. And then Abizi wanted to push up, you know, thinking that these guys are flanking Kitchen. And then he dies bottom bedroom. And right now, we go four dead with about 30 seconds left. We need to start winning these rotations. And thankfully, we win this rotation. Uh, the only thing I'm curious about is if any enemies got into the back. All right. So right here, Abizi just called out a very important play. Again, we're back into that setup. We have a player holding the right lane, we have holding the cross, and then we have a player holding these middle steps. This player middle steps is the MVP of this hill. He is the most valuable player where right now he needs to be snaking. And Abizi called it out. Bro, just snake. This player can't die. That is his job. Don't die. That is it. Don't die. And the reason why you don't want to die is because... We have this cross right here to win this gunfight on the cross. And if we die at all, we're still going to spawn in the back. Everything's okay. All because of this MVP, uh, MVP player right here. Uh, but what happens? Boom. He dies. And because he dies, now this is where chaos happens. He spawns out all the way over at Kitchen. These players are pushing up for a break. And right now, with the hard point spawning up and because of squad spawns, what happens is, boom, these seconds left. Um, thankfully, Abizi got to these back steps, and because he blocked it, we got a team spawn, and I kind of got scared a little bit because I thought this player right over here was going to get a team spawn over here. 
And if that got a team spawn over there, that allows an opening for these enemy teams to basically push up and uh, get through to the back and basically flip these spawns for P2. So I got a little bit scared and a little bit nervous uh, just because, you know, spawns kind of suck and the squad spawn potentially could have gave it uh, all the way over here at a uh, restaurant, but we didn't. Um, so now we're still in the setup. Right here, Abizi is just filling in what he needs to fill in, and he's playing the anchor role. And right there, it looked like the enemies just got a really good spawn at Chandelier, and they just kind of all fled through Chandelier. That's just really unfortunate. And uh, with 20, 30 seconds left, this is where we want to rotate. So this is where the second that we all died, boom, we go three dead, and we spawn out. The second we spawn out with 30 seconds left, if we just simply rotate to new... We're going to be able to be set up and win on a money hill, right? Um, and these enemies are only going to get up to 160. So uh, usually you would want two players to be sitting in new hill already, and then the other two players can be going for cuts on the rotators. But right here, what happens is we fight old, and because we fight old, now we're losing the pacing of the game where there's already going to be a guy new. A BZ already calls it. He already knows there's a guy new. So we have to kill this guy's side door. There's another guy, uh, Cat. Unfortunately, we're losing these trades. And now it's just coming down to just timings and who wins the gunfights, who wins the trades. Um, and it gets it gets really scary, but again, <laughs> these guys are pro players. Abizi pops a nasty three-piece. He's going for the four-piece. He gets the four-piece. He continues pushing out, trying to flip spawns, um, just cause some chaos. And uh, right here, this is... Uh, basically where the game ends up uh, just because now they just win trades and uh, basically win the game right here uh, we're gonna see a few more trades go down and then I uh, essentially that'll be GG's so again Abizi just pushing out trying to get these spawns over here at bed the team just agrees that they prefer bed spawns unfortunately we lose our gunfights on the rotation and this is where we just need to take our time, slow down. We hear Abizi call that out. Great calls uh, from Abizi, uh, where we just wait until we're all four spawned up, and then we attack, right? And right here, Abizi gets a really good spawn to go for a pinch, and basically the play call is this. Guys, don't die yet. Make some noise. Shoot. And then once Abizi starts shooting and starts getting shots down on the pinch, that's when we attack out, right? And... Uh, Let's just see how it breaks down, and this is where it's GG's. They're waiting, they get control of main. The players on uh, players up top are already winning their gunfights, and uh, that's just you know the best case scenario, where these guys actually win their gunfights, that's beautiful. And then just like that, four dead, GG's, that is the round win. Good job, ABZ. Amazing job, I believe he dropped about 30 kills in that game, insane. And of course, if anyone would like to follow Abizi, please follow him at Abizi on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. And uh, thank you guys so much. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll catch you guys until next time.